like to take this time to thank the Yeti, one of our sponsors. The Yeti, today's tease for your torso. The Yeti, supporting games done quick events since, with tees since 2012. $3 from every $11 tee is donated to Doctors Without Borders. Special thanks to the amazing artists who donated their talents. Mark, Carrie, Casey, Tanya, Logan, Drew, Tiffany, and Nina for donating their artwork. I'd also like to thank Tiny, or take the time to thank Tiny Build, another one of our sponsors. Tiny Build is an indie developer and publisher. Tiny Build is known for games like Speedrunners, Divide by Sheep, and Lovely Planet. Tiny Build just released No Time to Explain on Steam and Xbox One. Tiny Build is supporting and working with indie developers from around the world. You can follow them online at, or you can follow them at Twitter at Tiny Build. also like to take this time to thank World 9 Gaming. World 9 Gaming is the premier co computer and console gaming provider for events across the Midwest since 2005. World 9 Gaming has dedicated staff, tournament expertise, and expansive collection of games and consoles. World 9 Gaming is the best gaming experience at the lowest cost for all events large and small. For more information on booking, check world9gaming.com.
that we're good to go then? Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> hi everyone. <laughs> Now this is Half Minute Hero, probably the most intentionally designed fastest pace RPG ever made. So because of that, we should probably quickly explain the uh, what what the game's about before getting started. So um, we're going to be starting off with Hero 30 mode, which is the main just the main story mode of the game. It's based on a series of uh, missions, at least 30 of which you have to uh, complete in order to finish the game. And then for each one, you have um, you have to defeat an evil lord, aka a boss, within 30 seconds. Although you do have means of extending that, that we'll be getting into a bit later. But um, it's basically a parody of JRPGs in very condensed fashion. And I think we need our hero's name now. Paxmug, P-A-C-S-M-U-G, capital P, capital S. Okay, like that. Yep. All right, ready to go? All right, three, two, one, go. Is that starting? All right. All right, so this is the backstory. Hope you all read that, there'll be a quiz later. All right, so for the first mission is actually one of the more complicated ones just because several of the gameplay mechanics are still being introduced. So she's fighting these grass fiends and then picked up a medical herb from that ship there. And she's trying to kill the last one as close to this town as possible so that she can go in and get healed uh, right away afterwards before actually con activating the uh, evil lord. So what she's trying to do now is because she's, you can't beat the evil lord uh, before this timer runs out just by design, she's trying to grind up to level 4 before um, that happens so that, and get healed preferably too so that then she just has to go straight to the boss and uh, win afterwards. You're seeing a little bit of dashing starting too. Um, dashing is something that gives you faster movement both um, in battles on the overworld and in towns and uh, it does drain your HP when you do it. So it needs to be uh, managed in that regard. But doing dashing also lets you manipulate the RNG in this game specifically for what kinds of random encounters you get. And that'll be coming into play quite a few places later on. And that's it for the first mission. And we get credits after each one for some reason, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the second mission's a lot more straightforward. For this one, uh, she just has to go, because uh, one of the most beloved tr traditions of JRPGs is a bridge being broken and you having to fix it in order to uh, get to the next place you need to go. And normally you'd need like carpentry skills and the like, but here all you need is a hammer. So she gets that and then. Uh, Continues. That you greater than evil uh, message means that she's reached the game's recommended level for fighting the boss, but that's not actually going to be happening in most of the missions. Because through uh, speedrun routing, that can be uh, circumvented. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this, lo this mission introduces us both to horses, which she's going to be fighting one battle to purchase. A horse lets you uh, dash without losing HP, and then also special weapons geared towards specific monster types, in this case a bug swatter, which lets you one-hit kill any kind of bug enemy, which includes the boss. <laughs> And there's some equipment swapping needed between a lot of the missions, uh, just for minimizing the level you need to grind to, and then also for, um, because the game sometimes forces, or whenever you get a new piece of equipment, the game forces you to equip it, and sometimes we don't want that. So here she used her uh, dashing in order to manipulate the battles to all be bugs that she can kill with the fly swatter. Uh, something else worth knowing is that in, the, in Hero 30 mode, you get an encounter every nine steps of walking. Dashing doesn't uh, count towards that counter. And then um, 
She, then she bought a better weapon than the Fly Swatter to actually fight this boss, because the Fly Swatter is basically useless against non-bug enemies. Unless you're very overleveled. Yes, which we will be doing uh, through minimal effort uh, in a few places. So the main thing for this mission is that the cave right south of where she starts sends her different places depending on what the 30-second uh, timer is at. So here she's um, just fighting some battles to gain, mostly to get money. And then once it has between 19 and 20 seconds, she can go here and buy this power meal, which ma massively increases her, um, her level and stats for 10 seconds in game time. So she just gets that, goes straight to the boss, and kills him with the fly swatter, even though he's a fish. Alright, so this one, um, the map changes over the course of time, and uh, she's basically just gaining lo her levels right at the start, and then she needs to make kind of a mad dash to get to the boss before the uh, tides come back in and cover up the, the bridges. That's it for that one. This is my one of my favorite levels in the game. Cats has appeared. I am arrived. Ha 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 ha. I set you up the bomb. You have no chance to survive. Make your time. All your color are belong to us. <laughs> For great meme. <laughs> so here she did she's doing RNG manipulation to get two enemies in that fight in order to level up more efficiently than she needs to uh, fight again. Uh, two more fights, I believe here. Then heal up, go to Katz's castle. Katz has appeared, you're on the way to destruction! Ha 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 ha! Take off every zig! Ow, move zig for, for great justice! And great justice is achieved! <laughs> okay, so for this one, um, there's a side. There's a. There's what you're. What, what's kind of introduced as a side quest, as far as needing to um, fight one of the uh, bandit trio, which are based on the Three Stooges. In this case, uh, Kali, in order to um, stop him from interfering with the uh, currents and ships. But if you don't do this, it actually the game ends after this, and you get a bad ending. Although I mean, you can just retry the mission. Also, ideally, she wants to be level 9 for this boss, but she can do it at level 8. She just needs to stop dashing in the fight a little bit sooner. And that was, that was all planned, as tight as it looked. Because dashing in fights speeds them up, both as far as getting to the monsters sooner and also hit, hitting them faster, but it drains your HP, so don't always want to do that. Okay, so this one's uh, kind of a unique level and it actually has a fake uh, boss. This is where you're introduced to the beautiful Evil Lord who has more relevance if you play Evil Lord mode, which is one of the optional, uh, or one of the extra gameplay modes. So we actually were fighting the real boss here, Noir, who um, turned the Evil Lord's girlfriend into a bat. And then we return the, we rescue Millennia and save the day. So the start of this mission has more RNG manipulation through her dashing patterns because she wants to get uh, two bandit encounters at this point in order to level up faster. Well, I want to get three bandit encounters with two each. Mm -hmm. Then once that's done, she goes to fight uh, Donovan, who I believe is the leader of the bandits. And if you uh, beat him, he joins you, although he's completely useless in fighting. But having him lets you uh, get past these rocks on the map and get to the uh, get to the boss faster. Yeah, as you'll see, he's not very helpful. Bye. Yep. <laughs> I don't know if we explained medical herbs yet. To um, 
You can hold one item at a time in this game. The most common one you use in a speedrun is medical herbs, and that refills all of your HP, regardless of how much you have. You can even use one after you've been killed, too, because when you run out of HP, you get sent flying off the screen and respawn at the start of the map, but if you uh, use the medical herb before you get sent off the left edge of the screen, you can keep fighting. Okay, so this one is a branching mission as far as um, how you go. She actually she used the uh, fly swatter to get to kill, one hit kill that bug and get to, from level 1 to level 19. But then she's going back and doing the other route option, which is to uh, fight one of the bandit trio to get the mask, just because she wants to complete to do that in order to affect which mission she goes to next, because that's, that's the faster route. But fighting the bug is the faster way to level up. So it's kind of like having it both ways. So because of um, retrieving the mast in the last mission, in this one, um, she can buy the swimmer ring, which lets her uh, move over water tiles if she has it equipped, but it, and it's an inner tube, of course, too. But um, it, also, it has very poor defense, so that comes into play a few times. She just bought the swimmer ring and can go fight the boss. Now. I bought the wrong thing. I bought the swimmer flippers. <laughs> oh. Whoops. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to get it. Hey! Oh, that was close. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little worried there. <laughs> Okay, so for this mission, she's taking off pretty much all, most of her equipment in order to um, maximize her move speed, because uh, we don't really have time to get into the nitty gritty of what stats and equipment do in this game, but uh, equipment has a weight stat that slows you down, and uh, since for this mission, she's buying a, uh, she used the money from that egg in order to get a, uh, she's getting a dragon lance, which one hit kills dragons and crocodiles for some reason. Which includes the boss, so she just needs to be level 1 with that weapon in order to be able to win. So I believe for this one, you, if you don't have the swimmer ring, there's a, you can get a ship uh, through some means that I can't oh. remember. but. Uh, but with either the ship or the swimmer ring, there's these currents you need to uh, go take kind of a circular route around to get into that cave. She still has that dragon lance, which let her level up really quickly off of those enemies there. And then beat the boss. So this is a pretty short and, s and simple mission, but she's doing RNG manipulation here to affect what fights she gets, because she really wants these uh, mushrooms, just because she's, especially for the first battle, because the, the alternative, which is uh, some jerk birds, she's uh, not actually capable of beating at level one without a medical herb, but the mushrooms she can, and then beat up this guy that's sending rats that I think look like drumsticks after you. <laughs> This also has some manipulation to get mushrooms again, I believe. Needs to grind a bit to afford a uh, new sword, too. Which she needs in order to actually be able to kill the boss at the optimal level. Something you're seeing a couple times, too, is uh, her buying an herb, immediately using it, and then buying another one. that often ends up being a bit more efficient than actually going to the restaurant in the town, assuming there is one. We're getting healed. Okay, so 
So this mission actually got rerouted for, uh, fairly recently by uh, Nitrodon, I believe, primarily. So here she is um, walking eight steps and then dashing since you get an encounter on the ninth step. Uh, there's no encounters on this green grass area. And then by um, pretty much not doing any more dashing for the rest of the mission, she's actually capable of uh, finishing it without having to visit any towns at all, which is pr pretty nice. I mean, it looks kind of slow because she can't dash, but the fact that she can skip having to do anything else makes up for that. Because I think in the previous route, you had to rewind time once mm -hmm. the avalanche happened in order to be able to get to the boss, and then yeah. you can skip all that here. I don't know if we explained time rewinding yet, too, just because you don't really do a whole lot of in the speed run. You can pay money in order to reset the timer back to 30 seconds. Uh, the amount of money that it costs goes up the more you do it, but all of the planned time rewinds in Essentia's route, it's just going to be once uh, through paying money permission. So for this one, there's only monsters in this kind of hidden area here. Like, we've got rich walruses, rich peggies, I think that says. I think there's a rich polar bear coming up. Yep. And uh, we had to fight a, or steal a key from a snowman in order to get in there and then go fight the boss. <laughs> Those two frames of animation just can't quite cut it. Okay, so this is, in this mission you actually have the option to get NPCs that you've met if you've actually read, like done some of the other forks in the story and read the text and stuff, but she's actually just skipping that because the only friend she needs is a horse. And um, she has to kill these cannons on a somewhat tight timeline in order to stop them from blowing holes in the ground, which oh, no. pretty much prevent her from getting to the end. Yeah, like I got that, retry. unfortunately. I got stuck. Yeah, because she wasn't able to get to the town she needed because of that hole. If you either run out of time or have something like that happen, you just restart the mission you're on. It's not terribly punishing in most cases. So once the cannons are down and she's upgraded her equipment, it's time to fight this Black Knight. It was a kind of a cool intro if you if you don't skip it too. <laughs> okay, so for this mission here. Um, she's equipping the swimmer ring again, and there's you're, the kind of the main route for this mission is to um, get a key in order to open the floodgates. But but you can actually skip all that and just uh, actually sell yourself into indentured servitude to that guy in order to, just to use his private beach, which you can cross to get to the boss. And there she used a bomb in order to kill it at level one. It's one of the rare cases in the speedrun route of using an item that's not a medical herb. So the price for getting to uh, swim in a private beach is uh, this mission here. Uh, the gimmick here is that all of the monsters are just as broke as you are, so you don't gain any. You need 1,000 gold in order to uh, go through a tunnel that leads to the boss, but mo the regular monster fights don't give you any money, so you need to do uh, odd jobs in order to uh, get that. You, you can either break rocks or fight cave monsters and the cave monsters are a lot more efficient. You know, she's already strong enough to fight the boss, but still has a bit more to do in order to get the bunny to get there. Fortunately, that means the boss is going to be a pushover. There was a time rewind there. All right, so now that she's got the thousand gold, she just needs to go uh, give it to that guy, go through the tunnel, and then 
find victory. <laughs> Those death animations are priceless. Okay, so this level has a volcano that erupts when there's 10 seconds left, I believe, and she uh, she wants to stop that to prevent some towns from being destroyed by uh, breaking rocks to change the uh, magma river course. These rocks can kill you if you have one hit point, too. Inanimate objects are very dangerous. That's the Mondo Mole from Earthbound, Moonlighting. Okay, then after the eruption, she uh, lets herself get killed on purpose to get back to the uh, start faster. So once that's done, she uh, buys a new weapon and then rewinds time, because if you rewind time first, you lose access to that shop, and she needs the, that sword in order to beat this uh, very, very hungry-looking uh, boss here. <laughs> okay, this level doesn't actually have any regular monsters at all, so the way you level up is by training with a hermit, which you'll see in just a second. Uh, rescuing the, t the uh, hermit's turtle apprentices here makes the, uh, the training more efficient. So each one of these air blast that she kills is worth experience, but you don't actually get any of it until after you're done. So she's using the in-game timer as a, to tell um, how much she needs to do, and she just wants 18 or higher, so that was actually uh, cut off pretty well. This one actually has one of the few actual useful guest characters, which is Catherine the Witch. Um, so, in order to get to the castle here, we need to uh, drain the swamp. And we need the witch's help in order to do that. This is a pretty straightforward mission outside of that. Okay, so this one, uh, every so often the uh, boss destroys one of the bridges leading to his castle, so to get there without a rewind, she has to get there before the 13 second mark, which fortunately she can gain a power meal from um, going through this cave, which then lets her uh, insta-kill the boss. She also manipulated not getting fights in that forest on her way to the cave, because she wouldn't have been able to win against the monsters there, but thanks to the power meal, which pumps up her stats, she can win easily. So this level, I think, is kind of heavily inspired by Final Fantasy V, because she needs to go find a uh, healing item in order to um, cure a sick dragon, which then gives her a ride around for the next couple missions. Fortunately, she doesn't have to fight the dragon leaf in order to uh, cure the dragon. <laughs> okay, so the dragon is kind of like a souped-up version of the horse, and that she can dash without losing health and also go anywhere. So first we need to rescue some of the dragon's friends, then level up a little bit more. But then before fighting the boss, she's going to make a detour to get a uh, useful um, useful combat item called the uh, Dual Greaves, which will increase her attack power at the uh, expense of not being able to run away, which is not something we're in the business of doing here.
Yeah, she didn't even need to heal thanks to the power of the dual greaves. So just kind of out of nowhere, the bandit, uh, the, one of the bandit trio became evil and became the boss of this level. So, but there's this wind current around the island where the castle is that prevents the dragon from flying there. So she needs to go fight a, uh, bur a uh, very jerky bird that's creating the wind. But to do that, she needs to go through this tunnel that only appears during certain parts of the timer. And then once that's done, it's uh, curtains for Lord Lori, I think that is. It's kind of hard to read text I think it's on Larry. this TV. <laughs> okay, we've got the infinite Welpin Lord, who's kind of like Gilgamesh from certain other games here. In order to beat the boss, um, she needs one of two legendary weapons. The faster one to get is the Sea Spear, which uh, using RNG manipulation through dashing to get, the, get that shark fight, she can then get the weapon and then go straight to the boss. This looks pretty scary at first, but then once, uh, once she's broken its shield, uh, it's very easy from there. That shark sprite is the best, too. <laughs> so we've got the next to last mission here for Hero 30 mode. In this one, you're meant to meet up with this weird lady who gives you a tour all around this island. But uh, we don't, we're not going to do that because that wastes time. So instead, we're just going to find out that the castle near where the start is is where the boss is. Heal up so that dashing can be used, and then use the Silver Sword to win, because Silver Sword one-hit KOs demons. Alright, this is the last mission, although it's the longest one in the game. So in this you can get uh, in the NPCs you met during your journey to uh, join you again. This time she's actually going to be doing it a couple times. First phase is leveling up a bit. And then getting a Porta statue which automatically refills the timer when it runs out. And there's Don and Ben, and it's yes, useless it's, as always. Yep. <laughs> so now she, I think it's like nine total fights at this point. Seven. Seven, okay. Um, just basically going to keep grinding and then let the timer run out and refill with the Porta statue. She's, so, she's high enough leveled that she can just kill these things despite being at one HP without taking any damage. That's an intentional death there to warp back then fight it for real. Next is my uh, favorite enemy in the whole game, the Mouse Blade. But how could you not call that a Mouse Blade? So the way is open to the final boss, but in order to actually be able to beat it, she needs a couple more pieces of equipment. She also needs to kind of manage her health for dashing at this point too, because she needs to leave enough HP left in order to both actually kill the mini bosses and also be able to dash back to towns afterwards. Not so good. Yep. I had enough time left though for backup strats. Alright. This is a very complicated fight. She holds the circle button on the PSP. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> And 
And then uh, we end timing on the results screen for the final mission. There we One go. Time. Maybe. There we go. <laughs> I think that's a new PB. Twenty-eight forty-five. Twenty-eight forty-five. Is that what it is? What is it? I think that's twenty-eight. Something. Twenty-eight forty-five. It's good. Anything below thirty minutes is really good. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think you only had to restart one mission. I think so. Yeah, that was really good. Mm. Nice. But that's not all. Both of the um, extra modes are met, right? 